And um, the productions that you're about to see have been written, rehearsed, and tech rehearsed all in a little more than 24 hours. Yesterday at about one, our six writer directors got here and they selected a theme from a hat that is under the umbrella theme of A Night on the Town. And um, they also were, they were assigned a hat of four to six people and they drew two props that they were required to incorporate into their scripts. Then they went home yesterday afternoon and night and some got sleep, some did not get very much sleep. They um, wrote a short play and then got here with their cast at 9 a.m. and everything has been rehearsed and gotten ready from that point until now. So we hope you enjoy the show. <laughs> Uh, I'm Ben Goldman, um, so my theme that I got was a candlelit dinner, and my props were somewhat conveniently a candelabra, um, and a telephone, and the name of my play is The Person, It's Always the Person. With Tatiana Boyle! It's always the person. I've never eaten here before, but I've only heard great things. Uh, the lobster is really excellent. You look lovely tonight, Gina. Well, thank you, Doug. Well, welcome. I am Stephen, and I'll be your waiter for the night. Can I get you anything to drink? Water's fine. Water, water. I'll be right out with that. Mm -hmm. Would you like to order some wine? Sure. Uh, the Pinot Noir or the Shelby? Shelby sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the Pinot for a great decade for Shelby and the age of Shelby. Have you looked at over appetizers yet? I'm still thinking about it. Alright. Tell me something interesting about yourself. I won a gold medal at the night. You! I've been seeing you for years. I wasn't looking for you, John. You just fell off the grid. I couldn't find you, so I gave up looking. Ha! That's because I changed my name. I legally changed my name from John to Stephen. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it over here, but I also changed my name from John to Stephen. What a funny coincidence that is. <laughs> Hold on, you. I thought you were dead. Well, I'm clearly not dead, you've been with. <laughs> well, well, does this ring a bell? <laughs> does, does this ring a bell? <laughs> well, does this ring a bell? <laughs> Well, 
I met her, the woman you're with tonight, um, and her mother showed me pictures of Tina before the incident, and she looked exactly like her. So, what you're telling me is you dated both Betty and her mother after they had become separated. Well, yes, it does sound like that, but after her <laughs> mother dumped me, I, um, I had no one left to comfort me but your mother. <laughs> my mother? No, no. I named my dog your mother. <laughs>
air balloon, wine tasting, all in drag, extravaganza, vacation, <laughs> in order to somehow clear your mind. Am I right? And then, Betty, you were stalking. Even with you. <laughs> you know, could be, had broken up with you for a mysterious older woman. But what you did not realize was that that older woman was actually your mother. The dog or the person? The person. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the reason that Stephen had broken up with you was that he had gotten into some trouble with the IRS. So to solve his problems, he wisely kidnapped an IRS agent who also happened to be your mother. The dog or the person? The person. <laughs> Anyways, your mother, your mother, excuse me, quickly developed a Stockholm Syndrome and fell in love with you. But at that point, Betty, you decided that you would disguise yourself as Albert, the loyal and trustworthy butler plumber. <laughs> and in doing so, you discovered that he had broken up with, uh, with his wonderful, mysterious older woman, who at that point was actually bearing a child, but he was unaware of that fact. So, what she did was she named it after the estranged father and named that child John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. But that son was actually Stephen with the BH, who she gave up to adoption shortly after his birth. But he had to change his name to Stephen with the BH because John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt does not fit on the playbill for a juggling ball and breathing routine. And therefore, we do not know why that all happened, but obviously it did. <laughs> What we must further see is that your mother, the dog or the person, the person, it's always the person. Anyway, oh, that's why that's anyway <laughs> 1992, your mother, all of you, decided to go to the Olympics because she was so inspired. And she won the gold in archery, and her sister was going to win the golden ball, except that your mother's victory arrow pierced the heaven that pierced your hot air balloon, and he came tumbling down and won the golden ball. And because of that, you were inspired to be the first pair of sisters to win the gold, and so you created a second identity for your already alter ego woman, and you now your alter ego woman's sister, and you went four years later to the Olympics again, and there you decided and were able to win the gold in both archery, and the ball. But at that same <laughs> Olympic, the enemy of was there looking for his long lost mysterious woman. But when coming upon Stephen with a PH, he fell in love, but could not help himself from cheating on Stephen with a PH with Stephen with a PH sister, who was also Stephen with a PH, and consequently your son. <laughs> but all that was for nothing. Because in 1988, Betty and Tina. We're at the Summer Olympics, and Betty won the goal in the vault, and Tina in archery, and so it is really they who hold the title. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Good. <laughs> and... <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> Ha ha ha!